Peter Ducey's statement that Iran has disregarded warnings from the Biden-Harris administration underscores a conservative critique of what is seen as weak leadership. The Ayatollah's apparent indifference to public warnings from Biden and Harris reflects broader concerns about the administration's approach to foreign policy. Ducey's commentary implies that the administration lacks the strength, deterrence, and global respect necessary to handle adversaries like Iran. Neil, um, just out of that briefing with the press secretary and also Secretary Mayorkas and saying the National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan, and the crux of it was that just because nobody is known to be killed from the ballistic missile attack in Israel does not mean that the United States government is taking this lightly. This is a significant escalation by Iran, a significant event, and it is equally significant that we were able to step up with with Israel and create a situation in which uh, no one was killed in this attack in Israel so far as we know at this time. We are now going to look at what the appropriate next steps are to secure first and foremost American interests and then to promote stability to the maximum extent possible as we go forward. It has been well documented over the last couple months that President Biden and Vice President Harris have put out the word publicly to the Ayatollah in Iran, don't. And now we know that the Ayatollah does not listen to them. We also know that since President Biden took office, his administration several times has unfrozen accounts that add up to billions of dollars of Iranian money for the Iranian government to have access to. They have said that that is for humanitarian reasons, and they are insisting today that they still have the most muscular posture possible towards Iran. We have not lifted any a single sanction. If anything, as I said moments ago, we increase pressure. President Biden says he is going to talk to Netanyahu. They've been in somewhat regular communication since October 7th, almost a full year ago, but they're not talking all the time. So the two of them are expected to have some kind of a chat about next steps at some point very soon. Criticism is mounted, even on humanitarian grounds, over the decision to unfreeze Iranian funds. There's a growing public perception that concessions to adversaries diminish U.S. influence, allowing access to billions in frozen assets while Iran continues its aggressive actions is viewed by critics as dangerously naive diplomacy. Many believe that strong, decisive actions are preferable to prolonged negotiations and economic leniency toward hostile regimes. As attention turns toward the Biden-Harris administration's handling of Iran, there's a rising call for stronger deterrence measures. The inability to secure Iran's compliance with public demands fuels the notion that U.S. leadership is faltering in foreign affairs. Deuce's remarks highlight this lack of respect and authority, suggesting that the administration is failing to manage complex geopolitical threats effectively. The Ayatollah's dismissal of Biden and Harris's warning symbolizes a breakdown in leadership. This perceived failure creates a psychological ripple effect, fueling public anxiety and a growing mistrust in the administration's capability to protect national interests. In the realm of national security, deterrence is crucial, and if it fails, especially with Iran's continued provocations, it breeds a sense of vulnerability. For many, confidence in leadership is rooted in the belief that a president can respond decisively to threats. Ducey's argument reflects a deeper fear of weak leadership and ineffective foreign policy strategies that fail to hold Iran in check. 